Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And before I start, just let you know that um, firstly, I do have other podcasts for sleep. I've got a Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast, a Sleep Hypnosis Weekly podcast, and I've got other podcasts as well. I've got one for uh, anxiety, stress, and panic attacks. So if you just go to Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R dot com. And just put my name in in search and you'll find me. The other thing is that I have removed all adverts from all of my podcasts. So you no longer have to uh, sit through adverts trying to sell you socks or whatever. So I got myself a book and it's basically, it's called The Great Book of British Useless Information. Everything you ever wanted to know about Britain. I think it should be everything you never wanted to know about Britain. But uh, it's by Hannah Warner. And I got it from the the works. It's a bookshop. Basically, they sell cheap books. So it was recommended retail price eight pound ninety nine. It's got a big sign, huge savings, and it was only three pound to buy. So uh, published by John Baker, no John Blake Publishing. dot co. dot uk. So I got this, and this was kind of part of my little plan, is to start buying a few few books which has just pointless information, maybe not pointless, but you know, stuff that I can just play around with. And uh, I'm going to get some books probably on... There was one book there. I didn't want to spend much money, to be fair. I think £3 is is a fair amount. I should get uh, a few hundred hours worth out of this over time. But uh, I saw a book on... I think it was... How to Maintain some kind of car it was from like 60 years ago but that was £6.99 so I didn't want to pay pay that amount today before I start with this boring stuff um Well, today, I mean yesterday, because it's now the 22nd, I think, of August 2019. Yesterday, or last night, I made two recordings. Uh, One was for Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis. I think it's 133. So number 133 and then I also did number 48 relaxation hypnosis for stress anxiety and panic attacks now that was a good session actually I came out of that thinking oh that was quite good I didn't, didn't know that stuff was inside my head 
so and Andre seems happy he seems really happy really chilled out he's not scratching or anything and he what did I do today oh yeah last night I wasn't up all night and I wasn't up all night the night before either and I won't be up all night tonight I'll easily be in bed by four so these uh, seven o'clock eight o'clock in the morning things has kind of come to an end if I go to bed at four I can be up at midday and I've got the whole day ahead so I woke, I don't know if I went to bed about three in the morning yesterday and woke up about nine and I had the window, Anglia windows coming round to measure my door. And I thought they would come around to see whether I needed a new door, but they weren't. He would just come around to measure it. And he said, you're getting a new door. That's it. The thing is, he was grumpy. It was really grumpy. And I said, are you all right? And he said, oh, no. He was stuck in traffic for an hour due to roadworks or something. And I thought, I wonder if he's getting paid to do his job. I wonder if he's getting paid. Because I can imagine if you're not getting paid, that would be annoying. I mean, double glazing, the window companies, they get paid quite well. I think. But I don't know. But, you know, so it's hope your day gets better. And he went away. He just was only there for... A, Four or five minutes. But in the morning, because I didn't have any food, well, I had some food, but didn't have much in the way of eating food. Got a few frozen bits in the freezer, which is where I usually keep them, but not much in the fridge which where I keep fridge stuff and, that, and I thought hmm I'm going to go into town get myself some a bit of shopping because I've run out of water bold water and a few bits so I'll, I went into town I got delivery ordered and that came between four and six I think it got here about five fifty no four fifty five I think roughly and so I went into town I said hello to my there's a a, a big issue seller that I've that I say hello to so I said hello to her bought her a coffee And went in there and uh, into the coffee shop place. I don't know. It's one of the ones. I think it's one of the ones that don't pay tax. I'm not sure. I think so. And uh, I said, uh, "Coffee, please." He said, "What type?" I said, "Don't care. I'm not drinking it. Pee in a cup if you like. I'm not bothered." I, I didn't say that, but just. You know, so I got the coffee, and it was quite weird because I was the only customer there, and I was standing at the counter near the till. There was no one else there. One person sitting down, and she did the coffee, and she took it all the way to the other side of the counter, at the end of the counter. 
and put it down and showered out cappuccino. Instead of just handing it to me, there, I can understand doing that when it's busy, but when it's only one person, and I went over, so I had to walk up to the other side of the counter, I said thank you, and she just ignored me. And this, on this occasion, before you ask, first of all, I hadn't farted, and I was wearing trousers. So I don't know why she ignored me. It's one of those days, I suppose. I don't know. So I, you know, I came out, gave the big issue person. I've forgotten her name. Anyway. I call her I call her by you know, big issue and I give that to her. I said see her by it's what quite weird uh, when I say uh, when I first see her that hi bye she said which is it? I said well hi bye where are you going or are you coming? I said um, neither really and she she said, go away. No, she didn't. She said, do you want to buy a big issue? I said, nah. And she said, no one wants to buy it. I said, I know, but why would they? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, it's... People seem generally don't... First of all, not many people seem to carry cash anymore. And also... Everything seems to be digital now. Not everything, but most things are sort of digital. Like magazines and stuff online. So buying a magazine is, is kind of a bit outdated now. It's Which is a shame. It's like, I don't know what else. I suppose unless she, they get the big issue sellers to sell... Um, like a little card which is you scratch off and it gives you access to the website or something oh, by the way for those who don't know what a big issue seller is it's a uh, big issue is a magazine for the homeless so it's uh, gives someone that's homeless an opportunity to make money um, for themselves so they have to buy the magazine first I think like for a pound each and then they sell it for two pound fifty or something and yeah it's like it's kind of and they're quite strict who they who they have and you gotta you know make sure you do it properly and you're not allowed to wear fruit on your head for some reason I don't know I don't know if that's true. And, uh, yeah, it's a shame I'd sort of, she'd probably make more money if she was just begging, if she just sat down, had a dog with her. She took people to give her money, which seems just, uh, oh well. So I left, and uh, I said, bye, bye. She said, see ya. She said to me, when are you coming back? I said, nah, I don't know. She said, are you coming back today? I said, no. She said, where you been? How come I haven't seen you? I said, why so many questions? Seemed like she was actually genuinely intro you know, glad to see me. But I don't go into town very, that often. But when I do, I like to just go and say hello to her. Sometimes I get a little bit of shopping for her and stuff. So anyway, I went into around the corner, I went to the bookshop, got this book for three pound could have given that pound. It was on the card, so I didn't have any cash. 
but I did I spent two pound eighty on a coffee for her, which would have you know if I'd have got a magazine it would have been two pound fifty. So she got an extra thirty pence out of man. Well, I don't know. Two pound eighty seems a lot for a coffee. Anyway, as I was leaving, she chucked a football at my head, which was weird. And I went to the bookshop and a look around. I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll have a look around. She said, what I did. So I did, I had a look around. And since I was last in there, they've moved stuff around moved the books into different sections and I saw a few books I quite liked the look of but I wasn't really going in there to buy something for me I was going in there specifically to get a book for this podcast which is what I did in the end I got I got that then I went to Iceland and got my food organised for delivery. Then I went into another shop and got some cleaning liquid, uh, carpet cleaning liquid for my carpet cleaning machine that I've got. So that was £10. Just like the bank balance is going down bit by bit. And I come home and I'm probably home by 12, probably before 12 o'clock. And the, as I said, the, the what's it, uh, the doorman came along, measured the door and, uh, skipped away with a happy smile humming a tune and then I had about two hours before the or before four o'clock because my delivery was booked between four and six so I thought I got this carpet cleaning liquid whatever it's called and it's probably four times bigger than the the liquid container that I had that came with the actual machine. So I thought, ah, oh, okay. So what I did is I cleaned the entire hallway and then I cleaned pretty much half of the living room. And it really does look, you, you can really see the difference. It's, I actually feel, in some ways kind of brightened, brightened my day up a little bit, just having a cleaner carpet. And also there's just, just in case there are a few fleas in the carpet, which I don't think there are, that car, you know, that cleaning machine will get rid of everything. So tomorrow, I'm probably going to do the rest of the living room. So I'll do the other half, and then Friday, if I've got enough liquid left, because I've used quite a lot of it, I'll start having a go in the bedroom. But then the bedroom doesn't... Well, it's quite a big part of the bedroom that won't really need much in the way of cleaning, which will be the the area under the bed because Andre can't get under there. And I don't walk under there. I don't... And I don't spend much time in the bedroom. Andre spends way more time in the bedroom than me, apart from when I'm asleep. You know, he he's, he doesn't just sleep in there, he's asleep in there now, on my bed. 
but he's he you know that's his place he plays he does all kinds of stuff in there so he that's more his room than it is mine in some ways so I'm quite pleased with the carpet I can't see it very well because I've got my reading glasses on and it's not the same colour as it was when I first purchased it but that was four years over four years ago you know it's worn in um, I can't blame Andre for everything you know but although he, I, I like to But as far as scratching the carpet, he doesn't really do that much now. But wow, he really did when he was little. He ripped the carpet to bits. He absolutely destroyed the carpet. In every, everywhere, the hallway, bedroom. He really destroyed everything he could get. Anything he could buy or tear out with his fingernails he did he just he was relentless so so that was it that's pretty much the day had the delivery that came in um, what's really weird is the man delivering I heard the van come in so I was trying to get all the carpet done before four and then I was listening out for the for the van so I heard the van I heard what I thought was the sound of the van unloading because I kind of know the sound of it and I looked out the, the kitchen window and I saw it was so I undid the locks on the front door and just didn't open the front door but I just left it sort of ready to open and I was doing something in the living room I don't know what tidying something or doing a washing up or something like that and I could see he was going to come upstairs any minute so I was just like listening out and he knocked on the door it was so loud honestly I think he's got a metal hand I mean he might have a metal hand I suppose but it was, it was like literally even though I knew he was going to knock I didn't know it was going to be that loud you know even though I knew it was just the food delivery man when I heard the knock, I thought it was the police. I was like, oh no, not again. It's like, do you remember the, was it the man with the golden gun? What was the, what was the one with the, he had a metal hand, a golden hand? Or was it gold finger? That would be gold finger, wouldn't it? A man with a golden hand? Or the baddie out of Enter the Dragon. Bruce Lee film. I don't know, anyway, it just, it, it was noisy. I thought he was going to break the door. I felt like saying, oi, wait. I've got to wait ten weeks before I even hear from the, uh, the door people. Don't break it now. Wait till then. I didn't say that though. And, you know, he put the stuff down and so I, I've got a, like a little back issue, not like a, not an issue from the past. I mean, a, like physical, a physical, and I physical back issue on my left lower back and it hurts. 
that's 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 what I was going to say. It's worn. Uh, so this is just a age related age age related thing and um, or worn it's just worn out you know I did a lot of physical work when I was younger as well as sort of doing physical training and going to the gym and different things but a lot of my jobs when I was you know in my teens and twenties was physical hard physical labour loading and unloading lorries and stuff like that lifting boxes improperly you know sort of not not taking care of my back and so sometimes when I just walking along walking sometimes it hurts if I walk for too far and if I carry stuff uh, especially if I'm off balance I don't mean walking on a tightrope I don't there is no tightrope between the bus stop and my house just on a pavement just you know if sort of if I've got two carrier bags and uh One's got, I don't know, potatoes, big bag of potatoes, maybe um, a bottle of milk and, uh, you know, four pack of tin of beans in one bag. And the other bag has got like a little, little bag of feathers. It kind of, it's a bit uneven and it can hurt, it hurts my back. And I'm sure there was a reason why I was mentioning my back and I've forgotten what it is. Something to do with my back. Oh yeah, so when I get deliveries, I sometimes feel that, and I, well it's actually it's not just because I feel it, I've been told um, by delivery people or asked, aren't you going to help me? because I've got stairs where I live I and mean, it's not like a big huge block of flats where it, it takes an hour to get to the top but then you'd use a lift I suppose but it's just one set of stairs and I don't know how many steps there are because I've never been bored enough to count but it, you know it's, it's I suppose if you're carrying stuff it's quite heavy but that's the job isn't it that's the job carrying stuff if you're delivering is the job and which is why I get deliveries because I don't have a car I don't have any supermarkets close to where I live and I can't carry too much stuff because it hurts my back it's not that I can't physically carry it I'm strong, I can carry stuff, but I feel it afterwards, which is weird really, because it's like I can physically do it, and <laughs> but I don't notice till after it's done, because I actually gave, yeah, I carried a, a freezer when I first moved in here, not long after I moved in, someone gave me a, yeah, washing machine. And I carried it with if someone else carried it with me. They are really heavy. And I carried it, got it upstairs, and I had to lie down for about an hour because of my back. It just oh sore. Oh. Anyway. And that's boring. Any time I want to bore someone, I'm going to tell them about my back. It's brilliant having stuff like that. I always sometimes wish I still had my ingrown toenail. So I could tell people about that as well. Right, so what I'm going to do is... <laughs> C 
see this is a, a copyrighted book so I can't just read it you know like straight out but I'll, I'll just read you a few little bits out of it and as I said it's called The Great Book of British Useless Information by Hannah Warner so go out and buy this book so oh, I had a power my, my, the, my light bulb went out in the living room so I went into the kitchen went and got another light bulb and I had to stand on a chair because I can't reach it I can touch the light bulb but I can't put any I can't lift it up if that makes sense oh, it's not because it's heavy it's a light bulb it's not, it's not like it's a lighthouse light bulb it's which I imagine are quite heavy depending on the size of the, the the lighthouse and I suppose the weight of the light bulb as well I took it out and I put the other one in the hole turned it around a little bit wiggled it so it went in nice and then I turned, turned the switch on nothing I want to say nothing I mean the world kept turning and life carried on but there was you know there was no light coming out of the light bulb and I thought it's oh. like what's going on and I, I kind of got onto the chair again I twiddled it around and I, and I kept turning the light bulb on and off well, the, the light on and off the switch and Nothing. I was like, oh. and then I thought, ah, and I went into the kitchen, turned the light on, nothing, hallway, no light. There was a light, the light bulbs were there, but there was no electricity, so the light bulb had what do they call it click the switch or switch the switch switched it the switch had clicked or quipped and slicked or something uh, so basically I had to go to the the power point which is in the cupboard well the storage room and there's a power box and I needed to turn it back on so I go in there Luckily, and I only found this out recently, there's actually a light in there that works, even when the power's off. Which, I don't understand how that happens, but that comes on. So I can see what I'm doing. I go to close the door, and I hear this massive screech. It's Andre. And because it's dark or darkish I didn't see that he was following me and he's like oh, basically I was trying to close the door on him well, I was trying to close the door so he didn't come in but I didn't know he was I thought he was still asleep in the bed so he must have just jumped down as soon as he saw me probably as soon as he saw me open the door or heard me open the door he probably ran round because he loves going in there and I picked him up made sure he was okay made sure he's, you know I didn't hurt him or anything and he's he just laid in my arms just looking at me like, what did you do that for daddy? But it wasn't a hurt, you know. I just like checked him out, make sure everything was fine. But I think it was a little bit of a shock to him. It was a shock to me as well. I just didn't know he was there. Anyway, I turned the light, the the switch back on, 
and so I'm holding Andre and doing it at the same time and the lights on and I do believe that's the end of the light bulb story yeah I think that's that's all that happened but I've got the big light on behind me and that's much nicer in this room than the the light bulb because the light bulb in the the lamp like the the normal light isn't actually that bright but the light behind me is so that's yeah I kind of prefer it so this book Uh, Great British History is the first chapter. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick a few bits out. Instead of like reading it from start to finish. I'm just going to pick a few bits out. Oh wow. Uh, well here's one, that's probably not very... Not the funniest thing, but apparently, according to this, 13 couples on board the Titanic. 13 couples that were on board the Titanic were on their honeymoon. See what other ones are there. Right. Not all of this is particularly nice stuff. Well, this is interesting. Apparently, according to this, it was a mad- mandatory to have a ponytail in the British Army until the early 19th century. things is there ah look at this the first person ever to withdraw money from a cash machine was on the buses star Reg Varney who opened the world's first cash dispenser at the Enfield branch of Barclays Bank on the 27th of June 1967. The maximum withdrawal at a time was £10. So cash dispensers or ACM or A, A, I don't know what you call them in America but invented in England. And the first one was in Enfield, and I was born in Enfield. How about that then? So, uh-huh. I don't know how true any of this stuff is, by the way. Apparently, Great Britain and America went to war in 1859. (laughs) 
over a pig. The pig war began on the 15th of June when an, Amer an American settler named Lyman Cutler shot and killed a trespassing pig that belonged to Englishman Charles Griffin on the present day San Juan Island in Washington State. Ah. I don't know if this is true. British naval hero Lord Nelson suffered from seasickness all his life. Wow. Okay, so what other ones we got? Oh, this is interesting. Surnames were not used in Britain until after the Norman Conquest of 1066. Prior to that time, <laughs> people were only known by their first name. kind of still are really aren't we in a sense <laughs> that sounds like a joke oh dear the first nursery school for young children whose parents had to go to work, opened in Scotland in 1781. Oh, here's one. When Britain abandoned the Julian calendar in favour of the Gregorian calendar in 1752, the 3rd of September became the 14th of September and 11 days were lost. There was a public outcry as people demanded the return of their 11 days. Wow. Oh, oh here's something I think is very interesting. Venetia Burney from Oxford was just 11 years old when she came up with the name Pluto for the newly discovered planet named after the Roman god of the underworld in 1930 ah. another thing well, England has or Britain's done a lot of firsts in the world. The first airmail letter. The first airmail letter was carried by balloon from England to France in 1785. When I first read that, 
which was just now really I I thought how do they know how do they know where the bloom is going to end up but then I suppose thinking about it there must be like a hot air bloom with like a basket or something because you wouldn't just I imagine just guessing that just a a balloon with helium in it with a bit of string attached to a letter would be less efficient than a pigeon I don't know because pigeons used to be used didn't they Alright, so what's the next page? Let's see what else is there. Oh, look at this. Lillian Lindsay became Britain's first female dentist in 1895. And in 1984, the second female dentist arrived. No, I don't know. Isn't it weird though? Imagine a female dentist, 1895, at a time when women weren't allowed to vote, had no kind of say in anything yet to be a dentist and to I don't know just I just think it's cool not the not being able to vote but to being a dentist it must have taken a lot to be able to to pull that off wonder how she managed to do it because uh, those doors were closed weren't they for a lot of people not talking about women another one another the the first English woman legally legally to appear on the stage in England is believed to have been Margaret Hughes who appeared as Desdemona in Othello at the Vere Street Theatre in London on the 8th of December 1660 because I remember reading or seeing something uh, where women weren't allowed to be on stage so the men had to dress up as women which is a bit seems a bit strange really but not men dressing up as women because that's obviously fine but just why would women be why would it be illegal to I mean you think if you've got a play that's got men and women in it makes sense to uh, <laughs> okay the shortest war in history the shortest war in history was between Great Britain and Zanzibar on the 27th of August one day after my birthday 1896 Zanzibar surrendered in less than 40 minutes Hmm. Ah, 
didn't know this. Robins only became a symbol for Christmas in the 19th century when postmen, who mostly brought mail at Christmas, wore scarlet waistcoats and were known as Robin Redbreasts. Because oh. Robin, Robins are around all the time, aren't they? I remember years ago, it was, it would have been 2009, I just finished the second year of my university degree, and it was the summer holidays. And I had this reclining garden chair. And I was in the garden, in the back of the garden, away from everyone else. And it was near the washing line. But I was there and I was reading a, I think it was possibly Rollo May psychotherapy book or something and this Robin Redbreast was Robin just this Robin kept flying near me just kept coming close and then flying off again beautiful so what else is there Um, ah, the first crossword in a British newspaper appeared in the Daily Express on the 2nd of November 1924 Wow, look at this, is another one At the beginning of the 20th century almost a quarter of the world's population lived under British rule. That's a, must be a lot of paperwork, a lot of letters being sent out. In 1305, King Edward I decided that the inch should be fixed at the length of three barleycorns. So King Edward I is responsible for the inch. So if someone brags saying I've got I've got nine and a half barley corns here trying to brag, you'll realise that's not so good. So the Royal Mail first allowed the sending of picture postcards in 1894. 30 years later, 16 million were being sent every year. And I think with picture postcards, it's usually kind of holiday time isn't it that they're sent when someone's on holiday and they send a 
like a postcard, which is what they're, yeah, picture postcards. See, I don't know what it's like where you are, but in England, well, in the places that I went to when I was younger, and we used to go to quite a few different seaside places like Wales and lots of lots of different places when I was living with my dad and there'd be postcards and it'd be like saucy seaside postcards and be pictures of um, ladies with you know bits and men and just like very kind of uh, suggestive poses and yeah they were great I liked them but uh, I remember when I was in Bulgaria this back in 2002 I think and in the hotel as you came out of the hotel on the right hand side there was this shop and they sold postcards but for some reason the postcards had naked women or topless women on I mean I was I was angry because two pound each and I just didn't have enough to buy all of them so angry (laughs) oh dear I don't know if this is true Researchers believe more British. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get it out. No, I mean, read it. Re- researchers. Researchers believe more British passengers than any other nationality um, died on the Titanic. Because they queued politely for lifeboats. <sighs> wow. Of course, this, it does start with researchers believe. Oh, here's another one. God Saved the Queen, the song, the national anthem, was the first performed, was first performed in 1745 and is the oldest national anthem still in use today. Wow. I need to get more of these books, but from different countries. So the Great Book of America, or the Great Book of Canada, or the Great Book Useless Information about Australia and stuff like that. This is... I'm quite liking this. Here's another bit. Only 12% of homes in Britain had electricity in 1921 only 12% wow so I'll just do a couple more and then we'll bring this boringness to an end (laughs) 
okay. Again, I don't know if this well is in here, whether it's true or not. Um, in 1959, the Kew Gardens Hotel in London became the first British hotel or restaurant to install a microwave oven. The first use of 999 for emergency telephone calls. I know it's like 911 in America and a different number for different countries, I'm sure. But we have 999. Um, so the first use of 999 for emergency telephone calls was in 1937. Originally, the emergency number had been a single one, but a change was made after too many accidental false alarms. John Fletcher Dodd opened the country's first holiday camp in Caister on Sea near Great Yarmouth in 1906. The camp, <laughs> I've read this through first before reading it to you. Get this this is a holiday camp, this is somewhere where you go on holiday. You know, you've worked all year and this is your one week off. You're going with your family. You've been looking forward to this all year long. The camp rules included a ban on alcohol, gambling, improper language and noise after 11 p.m. when you think that it couldn't get any worse than that wait for this there were also fines for being untidy wow I've got a, a, a long this is the last one for today this is funny. During the 17th century, scummy burglars believed that they would never get caught as long as they carried a toad in their pocket. I mean, we all know that burglars are a bit thick, a bit, a bit dumb, but what? I can't read one more, sorry. In Tudor times, men believed that rubbing horse urine into their scalp <laughs> would prevent baldness. It prevent lots of things, like relationships, losing your virginity, getting a job, 
Trust me. Robin horseshoe and into your scalp. Messes up. Any chance of doing well in a job interview? That's Wow. There's so many here. In 1358, there was said to be only four public toilets or latrines in the whole of London, including one on London Bridge that discharged straight into the river. the first of that I could continue reading it probably all night but I won't because that's not fair on anybody so I'll be back again probably tomorrow being boring as ever and I'll see you then. So in the meantime, if you're still awake, remember to be kind to yourself and be gentle. Lots of love. Bye.